What's up, B2 Capital G here? Got a nice dueling book duel for you guys to check out. This is going to be a little different because this duel did happen uh, on my live stream, so I have to mute everything. Otherwise, I got music playing in the background. The stream gets to choose it. I don't want to get copyright striked because, you know, CeeLo Greens, FU, or and all that other stuff is playing. So, anyways, this happened on my live stream and on Farfa's live stream. We ended up having a nice little throwdown. This is a two out of three duel in case you guys see the run tiny, like, dang, Cap G going a little uh, crazy with. With the 10 minute videos and he's playing dark magician i am playing uh my trademark outer guys this is my irl real deck although i have made some adjustments after uh after a couple of matches like right before i did my stream i did make some adjustments where i took scapegoat out of my deck and i did decide to go ahead and start main decking ash blossoms which i used to do before then i came to the conclusion that i didn't need them now i'm kind of back towards um a lot of people try to turbo me out turn one, which is actually how you beat out your guys. So I decided to just go ahead and put the uh, the the Ash Blossoms back in the main deck, take Scapegoat out because Scapegoat is it's really hard for this deck to like. It has a high ceiling, get Boral load and all that. That's really nice, but the problem with Goats is. Um, if you're in a situation like this where you go second, you have to have it sit in your hand. It can't be defensively used. You have to set it for a turn, not special summon Conquery or use a manifestation or special any monsters, and then you have to flip it up and hope you can kind of go off. And honestly, like Outer Guys, I already know are offensively challenged. This deck is basically the new age trap tricks. It's never going to do a lot of damage, so I'm I, there's no point of making it what it shouldn't be. Like I'd rather just play Ash Blossom because almost every deck in Yu-Gi-Oh is going to give you. I'm making sure this is this is an HD or as HD as possible. Every almost every deck in Yu-Gi-Oh is going to give you at least one card to Ash Blossom, and you can see that Farfa he super he super like turboed me out like turn one, which is just really bad for my deck because it kind of guarantees he'll get to some of the cards he needs. Like he has Circle here, and even with him putting some of the cards back in his deck, I think he gets a plus from Dark Magician. He might not. I. I think maybe it's like 50 50 but there's like okay so he did get a free dark magician so he goes plus one off circle two and the thing is after using seven star sword like two spell book of secrets a desires plus a copy of um what's that card he used um as well a spell book of knowledge like there's no way he didn't get to eternal soul plus dark magical circle and if you know anything about ultra guys you never ever 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 want me seek to get banished so you know um i knew i was gonna lose this duel he went through way too much of his deck hold on for a second let me just pause i'm gonna i'm gonna have to fast forward there's a picture all right there we go there's a picture on my live, or there's a part of my live stream where uh, one of the, one of my buddies who comes to my stream, his girlfriend, he sent me a picture of her. I don't want that in this video. She may or may not be nude. Let's just not worry about that. So uh, I go for battle phase with Milu Seek. Uh, he activates Eternal Soul, then he uses Circle to banish my dude. And um, yeah, at this point, I didn't want to set too many cards because uh, Nadir could have, should I call him Nadir? Farfa could have just, he could have just searched, um, uh, I was, I'm, I'm trying to not say Harpy's Feather Dust, but he could just search Dark Magic Attack, he could blow on my back row. Now maybe he banished it from Desires, but that's not the point, I don't want to overcommit. And honestly, my main deck is not really suited towards Dark Magician, like I've got Breakthrough Skill and Scapegoat, that's why I left my Wiretap in my hand, I'm like, this card isn't going to do anything, and yes, I do main deck Wiretap. Some of you guys are like, why do you main deck Wiretap? Not only does it stop evenly matched, uh, but usually there's like one trap card in every deck in Yu-Gi-Oh uh, that you can hit with Wiretap. And generally, if you're not going to get evenly matched, then burn your Wiretaps on those cards. But Wiretap is just it's too good. Like, evenly matched is too strong against this deck that is super battle like a super um set five kind of base this is this is the new paleo guys this is like outer guys well i can't say new paleo as if as if it's replacing paleo but our play style of outer guys is identical to like trap tricks and paleo you have to basically wall up and i don't want to instantly lose to evenly match so this duel he has already won um the scapegoat is kind of just a foregone conclusion even if uh, Farfa didn't kill any of these tokens. It doesn't matter. What, the best I can do is just what summon Boralode, and he can just. I mean, he could trade his Dark Magician for a Link Spider, and then just like circle the Boralode anyway. So there, there's almost no way that I can come back and win this duel. He's just too far ahead. And with Outer Guys, you try to slow your opponent down in the first couple of turns, and then try you're you're trying to slow your opponent down to your uh, speed. Now, one card that I was experimenting with. Uh, during this live stream was drawing a lockbird and i didn't like drawing lockbird at first because it's like a it doesn't it's a neg one a lot of times but it stops decks like his 
when you saw in the first turn he activated desires he activated seven star swords and you know activated two secrets and spellbook of knowledge and lord darkness all this other bullshit like Droll and Lockbird says no. It says you get one search, you get one ad, then you can't do any of that other shit. And a lot of times, like, these turbo decks like this, because there's a guy in my chat who plays uh, Dark Lords, and he does the same thing where he'll activate Desires, a shell, three copies of, like, uh, uh, Lord of Darkness in a turn, to uh, ultimately to where he gets where he needs to go. I think he's going to Ash me here. Yeah, let's, let's see. There's the Ash Blossom. Um like it it tells those decks like they can't do all of that in one turn and if you can't get so far out ahead of me then i feel like my ultra guys deck can do what it's supposed to do it can kind of start out grinding and it can start kind of uh you know bouncing and being disruptive right here he's gonna go ahead he's going to uh banish my my sequitius pro i didn't even let him target whatever he was gonna banish i'm just like all right you got that so i'm bringing out the drools because he was out turboing me i'm bringing in ash blossoms because they're uh, they're cards that help against when your opponent is turbo you i'm bringing in ghost ogre uh to hit circle and I'm, I'm thinking i'm thinking about taking out strikes i'm taking out mirror forces because those don't do anything against our magician they don't He's not going to run my monsters over without having Eternal Soul. Eternal Soul makes him immune to Dark Magician. And I was like, maybe I should take out Maxi. I always sign my scapegoats out. That's why, uh, as I said earlier, I don't even play scapegoat anymore because I'm like, what, what's the point? What's the point of if I'm going to side scapegoat out every single duel, why not just play Ash Blossom and know that Ash Blossom is live against everything? Maybe I'm not siding my scapegoats out. We'll see. So I think I should. I'm thinking about keeping my Maxi in. I'm think I, I think I can't count cards right here because I don't really have that much stuff. I think I'm playing Chaos Trap Hole, which I've taken out, but side deck cards are not completely set in stone. So I think I did ultimately take my scapegoat out. And this time I'm going first. He's running 50 cards. I like 41. And this is a really, really good hand. I think uh, I think Furfit is going to Ash Blossom me, but I still feel good about my hand because I have um, Divine Wrath Power. If he Ash Blossom me, it's a one for one, so it's like whatever. So you you see here, people, when they Ash Blossom Demise, they like are they they think, oh my goodness, I won the duel. And it's like, not necessarily. You still have to like do stuff with your deck. So I think I got a little lucky here because I, don't, I just don't think he had a very strong hand. Um, he is going to activate Circle. There's nothing I can do about that if I had... Uh, un not unexpected die if i had unending nightmare i'd be able to do some serious work against this deck like that would have been really nice and once again i do have wiretap so i've opened up a wiretap uh twice so uh, actually since i've started playing wiretap i have not been hit with evenly with evenly matched not not a single time i'm basically just hoping that i can top deck a power card a power card being like pot of duality um ultra guys marionetta he gets uh desires too so actually no there, there's kind of no excuse now he should just win because not only do i have not really any great plays but he has circle he could have got a plus off that he got another plus off of duality that's a plus one or excuse me desires that's a plus one so i thought he was in a commanding position he activates seven star swords on radeon i didn't know he was running radeon interesting tech there I think I actually like that because it's a, it's a dark card in case he runs a Lord Darkness and it's a Kaiju to get rid of like stun monsters. But yeah, as soon as he set a monster, I was like, he bricked. He I, he bricked. Uh, or as soon as he set a card, I, I knew he bricked. Now, I, I top deck Sequidius, which is awesome because Sequidius basically can cancel out Eternal Soul. I already have a cancel or I already have a way of outing Eternal Soul because I have a wiretap set. But I felt pretty good about my position. Now, he's going to get next leveled here. Uh, this is just people not knowing what Outro Guys does, me knowing what the deck does, and you not knowing what it does. So what, what he's going to do is he's targeting those two cards, right? So here's what I do. This is this is just next level Outro Guys place. <laughs> all right, so here's what I'm, I'm like. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I can't save whatever the card is on the end. I think Solemn Warning Strike. I can't save that. So what I'm going to do is, yeah, I can't save Warning. So what I'm going to do is, in response, I'm going to activate Protocol and uh, i think it might take me a second just because i had to think it out i'm gonna activate protocol uh i'm gonna ask him for a response he cannot negate this card because protocol is already face up on the field and he's just reading it now what i'm going to do in addition to the protocol uh i'm going to chain uh sequidius's effect sequidius's effect is a bounce for both players but the card that you target on your field is sent to your hand as a cost so since my monster or since my card is already face up it hasn't resolved but it doesn't matter it doesn't need to resolve it just needs to be face up on the field now it can return it can return to my hand as a cost which means it's no longer on the field so his twin twister actually went from being a two for two to now being a one and i get a bounce as well so i think i made out like really really well in that exchange he doesn't get my um he doesn't end up getting my trap card and 
I still feel pretty good. I still have wiretap. I still have a wiretap. I've got a divine wrath and I have a bounce. So, and the thing is dark magician is it's a combo deck. Like you can have a lot of individual cards that are just brick. So he activates another circle, which I'm fine with because Circle doesn't do anything unless you have other cards in your hand to complement it. If you don't have Eternal Soul or you don't have Navigation, uh, like Dark Magical Circle is completely useless. So until he puts one of those cards on the field, I don't really care, to be honest. And if he activates one of them, if he activates Eternal Soul, I'll bounce it. If he activates Navigation, I'll wiretap it. So at this point, Nadir is not doing anything that I actually care about. And the longer he plays this duel like this, the worse it is. His deck is not... Dark Magician is... a it's an okay grind deck, but it's not going to outgrind out your guys. It's just not unless he circles me multiple times. So I'm going to start bouncing his cards just to make sure I can't be hit with um, like eternal soul or something. If he activates the other trap again, I'll wiretap it. I got a chaos trap hole, which is not bad because it can stop a rod. And now I don't have to use, um, I wouldn't have to use my, my divine wrath. I got a donation <laughs> for two bucks. I think I attacked for 800. I'm just going to keep setting everything. What I want, honestly, I just want a card that gets me into my engine. When I say my engine, I'm talking about, like, I want so I want um, Marionetta. I want, you know, um, Altergeist Milusik. I want cards that, what's it called? So he's activating Twin Twister again. This time he's targeting Chaos Trap Hole and Protocol. I'm doing the same thing. Uh, no, no, no. He did it. He did it during. He did it during the end phase. So I can't. I can't target. Uh, or I can't. I can't resolve it because it had only been set, or it hadn't been set for a proper amount of turns. But it's still fine because the thing is, even though he's twin twisted me twice, what what is he doing? He's not doing any like actual plays. So he's going to go blue boy. I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to activate my divine wrath, my protocol. Um, I'm going to get protocol back from the graveyard with Sequidius. And again, I feel like he's not really doing anything with his deck. Even though I'm not actually advancing my game state, it's much more likely that when I get one of my monsters, I can be in a, a really good position as opposed to his deck, which is just, he's just getting draw cards or search cards to search cards, which again, I don't feel like it's actually getting him anywhere because if you don't have so Eternal Soul, then I feel like you're not doing much in the deck. Eternal Soul or what's it called? So I got Alter Guys Materialization or Manifestation in the TCG. That gets my that that should give me my Sequidius right back. He activates Eternal Soul. I'm gonna wiretap that. We're not dealing with that card. I don't know if he has Dark Magician in his hand. I don't care. I'm not trying to find out. So I'm gonna just go ahead and I'm gonna wiretap it. And again, that's why I like wiretap because it the primary reason I run it is to stop evenly matched, but even if I don't stop evenly matched, someone's you're going to put a trap card on the field, some random trap, and I'm just going to throw my wiretap at that. And it's usually definitive. So during the uh, draw phase, I'm going to go for Sequidius again. And now my bounce is back online, plus my Divine Wrath is back online. And if I do use um, Sequidius for my Divine Wrath, the uh, Call of the Haunted manifestation will go back to my hand because of Sequidius. So now I feel like I'm in really, really good position. So uh, he says he's reading my card. And I'm not sure. I think I'm doing a little trash talking, which uh, I don't usually do when I play against Yugi Tubers. Like when I played against DZ, I was just silent. I didn't trash talk at all. But <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, uh, what's his name? Ryan Levine and Calvin Tahan talk so much shit about Alter guys. I was like, that's fine. I'm gonna I'm going to put all that anger and frustration out at you. So now I think Nadir is starting to understand the disruption that my deck has. Basically, I'm just bouncing everything that he puts on the board. I'm just bouncing every single turn. So it's kind of like he's never able to actually establish whatever the hell it is that he's trying to do. While I'm perfectly fine. If he regekis me, like, I don't care. My manifestation goes back to my hand and I just continue to play. He called it He called it evac.deck. And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. People who don't know what Alter Guys does, like, they end up being in the position that you're in right now. Where they don't know what my cards do. And I'm just evacing them every single turn, and they're not making a board. They're getting frustrated because I'm beating this down. I'm beating them down with this little teeny 800 attack poke monster. Did he just banish a, or what did he send to the? I swear he just sent Blue Boy to the graveyard. Okay, I don't. I don't even know if he banished. Maybe he did banish Dark Magician. I, I don't know. Anyways, back to bouncing again. The game plan is just to continually bounce whatever he sets and um still be able to bounce i drew call uh, card of the mods which is like thank goodness so chances are i'm just going to attack first so i can do my 800 damage even though 800 damage is kind of inconsequential in the grand scheme it's fine i'm just hoping i draw a monster here uh, i think i'm going to get me which is like that's all i wanted now now that once i get me i'm into my deck's engine and i can start blowing up cards on his side of the field so let's see what we get we got Ash Blossom, Eternal Soul, and Milusik. That was like the perfect combination. Ash Blossom, I don't give a fuck about, but 
being able to get um, music means that I now have a card that can blow up stuff on this side of the field or send it to the graveyard. In addition, I have the Unending Nightmare. I can take out both of his Eternal Souls. I can, or excuse me, uh, his Circles, and I can get rid of Eternal Soul. I can basically neutralize his entire game plan. So this is where I talk about the grinding of Altergeist, and this is basically where you should not lose any duels. Uh, yeah, you, you shouldn't lose any duels at this point. You generally want to keep like one random card on your opponent's side of the field so you can't be evenly matched but outside of that you should kind of start winning so what i was going to do is draw phase and stand my phase i'm just going to pop both of his cards for 2000 light points i'm at 8000 he's going to activate twin twister the third one actually now that i realize it so he goes for um twin twister but again he keeps twin twistering me but he's not like doing anything so like you keep twin twistering bro because i feel like you're just losing cards out of your hand he gets rid of unending nightmares that's fine and i think he um yeah, I'm not sure what, what the other card is. If he targets Protocol, okay, he targeted, he targeted the strike. I'm like, if he targets Protocol, then I'll just bounce it back to my hand, and I think I'll be fine. But I don't really need Strike because I have Protocol. Protocol is a strike. It's 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 It does the same thing. It just doesn't stop a summon. He keeps setting back rows, so we're just going to continue bouncing his cards like nothing has changed. So... Yeah, I, I'm just going to keep bouncing. I know you guys are like, Cap, this deck is boring. I mean, I don't know. I, I think Altergeist is crazy. <laughs> I think it's a lot of fun. Because <laughs> I think it just makes I think it just makes your opponent mad. But now that I have Milu Seek on the field, I can actually start doing damage. So I get rid of his Eternal Soul. I, I, I was thinking about going for... I was thinking right there about going for Hextia, but I decided not to. He's gonna set another card. I'm just gonna continue to bounce. So yeah, basically, if you you can't if you can't stop this like this kind of like semi lock, it's not even a real good lock. He just doesn't have any resources. Uh, then you're just not gonna win. Um, if I had any like synchros, I would summon them. Uh, I think uh, what is Sequidius? I think is a level three. That's a level two. Okay, I'm like maybe I go for a rank three. I don't play any rank threes. I don't play any synchros in my deck it's just all links so if i happen to draw a bunch of hand traps there's not a lot that i can do with them other than link summon but i would have had the link summon into something mediocre this time i actually am going to go for uh hexia the reason i'm going for hexia now is because i have not normal summoned which means that me Lucic will float um sequidius will float as well and i'll be able to search i'll be able to normal summon i'll have spell and trap negation i'll have monster negation i'll have bounce i'll have an ash blossom a ghost ogre and it's just it's too much locking. There's no way he's going to top deck out of that with one or, or with three cards in the sand. It's just not going to happen. Even if he kaijus me, what does that do? I still have a bounce. I still have uh, attack negation. It's just too much for him to be able to stop. I think I'm unbanning somebody in my chat. <laughs> I'm getting distracted. <laughs> All right, so I'm adding Manifestation back from my graveyard. That's Aquidius' effect. When he goes from the field to the grave, you get to add an Alter Guy's Trap back from your uh, graveyard this is milu seeks effect which gets me the normal summon of uh marionetta which i pull straight from my deck um i already have all my alter guys traps i'm just gonna set another one just for the hell of it but you can see hexia is already online she can negate a spell or trap card i think i would some a lot of times i summon milu seek which actually yeah i think i'm gonna summon milu seek in defense mode off of marionetta and then um I think immediately in the draw phase, I'm just going to go for Sequidius, so I have my bounce. But at the same time, not only do I have my bounce, but I have my uh, my spell and trap negation with Hextia. Plus, I have my what's it called? Um, and I'm, I'm just doing I'm I'm just doing a little more trash talking because uh, Ryan Levine was like, "Oh, this deck can't it can never so no." Calvin Tahan was like, "Oh, this deck can never put two monsters on the field at a time." Mm. Pretty good, pretty good uh, for a deck that can't put multiple monsters on the board. So this duel is basically a wrap. He summons uh, Illusion, which he activates the effect, which I'm just going to Divine Wrath it. And I think that's pretty much a wrap. So he actually, he discarded. I just, I'm like, I had I didn't see the cost. So I'm going to just activate my Divine Wrath. Even if he did get Dark Magician, like, I don't really, I still don't get what happens here. Actually, no, I, I could still, even if he somehow stopped, like if he, if he MST'd me, which I would, I mean, I guess I couldn't negate because I gave up my, what's it called? I guess I could still just Ash Blossom her anyways, right? Yeah, I could just Ash Blossom Illusion anyways. Like, I have way too many cards in my hand for him to think about coming back. And I get Concordia, who's my attack blocker. So, I'm just telling him Illusion is dead. And uh, I think we're going to game three right here. Unless he just wants to, like, super play this out. He's going to set. I'm going to bounce his card. And, yeah, he, he's never really, I'm never letting him get to his comfort point where he gets 
circle on the field. Plus, he has navigation. Like, I'm not, not doing any of that. So, all right, we win that duel pretty comfortably, in my opinion. Now we're going into game three. I don't think I'm siding. Uh, oh, no, I thought, I thought about Regeki and Dark Hole. And what the heck? Okay, I'm sorry about that. I, I don't know. YouTube, like, temporarily crashed. <laughs> okay, but as I was saying, um, I, I'm siding right here. Well, let me go ahead and play the video. What I'm thinking of doing is I'm looking at Dark Hole and Regeki, and I'm thinking, those cards are terrible against Dark Magician. It, like, they're not going to... Dark Magi I play Dark Magician. It doesn't... You're not going to win by having a random Dark Magician on the field and not having Eternal Soul. Like, that, that, I don't believe it's going to beat me that way. I'd rather have Spell Shattering Arrow to go one for one with circle like it just seems like a better play if he doesn't have circle on the field dark magician doesn't really do that much without circle anyway so i'm like i'm just gonna bring in spell uh, sh spell shattering arrow and i'm just gonna use it as an mst so my hand was pretty good right here uh, I generally don't want two normal summons if I have Joel and Lockbird, but Joel, this is exactly why I side Joel and Lockbird against these kind of turbo decks. Uh, so he's going for Apprentice Illusion. You can already see I'm getting my Joel and Lockbird ready uh, because what this does is it get, he gets a Dark Magician, which is like fine. I don't, I don't care. Um, but it stops him from doing Spellbook of Secrets and Spellbook of Knowledge and, you know, Seven Star Sword and all this the pot of uh, desires. It stops him from doing, look, like he just completely stopped his turn. <laughs> I was like, okay, so your deck doesn't do anything now that I've stopped your turn. So I'll say like, that's what, that's what making me like, that's the reason why I'm now playing three copies of uh, Joel and Lock in my side. Like if I can stop my opponent, if I can take their deck that just wants to draw, 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 and I can slow them down to my side speed like i'll take that all day am i going to i think i am going to demise here if he ashes me that's fine that's just another card out of his hand if he doesn't then okay that's fine again now you only have three cards to play with people think they ash me and they're like winning you're not you're not really winning because you're playing a combo deck and you're not close to your combo so i feel pretty comfortable about this he goes for magician's ride i was a little concerned about maybe twin twister uh, that's why I didn't immediately um, flip over protocol because I was like, maybe I should just solemn this. But I do ultimately go for protocol because, I mean, you got to remember he twin twister me three times in the last duel. So twin twister was on my mind. He does have desires, which he obviously would have done last turn. He would have probably used Ra last turn too. So um, I guess it was a mistake not to go immediately with Ra, but it's all good. So let's see what he does. Uh, I can't see my other background. I know one of them is manifestation. And if he attacks me directly, I'll, I'll eat the attack. Like, oh, he's going for another, what's it called? I'm going to Solemn that one. Yeah, I'm going to Solemn. I think she's, actually, I think she's, well, she's an inherent summon, so I can summon that, or I can Solemn that. So he's going to he's gonna hit me for 2,000, plus, obviously, I take 1,500. And at this point, I'm going to activate Manifestation. I'm not, actually, I was thinking, do I want a Manifestation here? I wasn't sure if I wanted to Manifestation or not because I already have like Sequidius in my hand and my plan is to bounce um, uh, Apprentice Illusion because she's not, I don't consider her a threat on field. And then I was like, if I Manifestation, what do I really gain from doing it now? I was like, I might as well just wait until my draw phase. But then I was like, what if I draw Pot of Duality? What if I draw Card of Demise? Then I can't use it. So I was debating back and forth. I drew an Ash Blossom, but it's like, whatever. I don't believe, I don't believe that he plays any um what's it called the reason that i did not activate um my sequidius there is because i didn't want to potentially have him use eternal soul and like mess me up so he's going to activate seven star swords i'm definitely going to ash that immediately now i feel really good because if he has eternal soul set i'm like all right you can't do anything and this is where i just start bouncing his uh stuff and i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna bounce apprentice solution and i felt i thought i was like okay i pretty much just win now right he has Eternal Soul, and I guess he did have a Dark Magician. Yeah, he had a Dark Magician in his graveyard. Uh, I did use my Bounce. He's going to attack over me. But the thing is, without him having Circle, I still feel like he can't... I feel like he can't... He can't outgrind me. I, I know what my deck does. I know what Dark Magician does, because I played Dark Magician IRL at events. I know the power ceiling of the deck, and I know that he doesn't have Circle, so I'm like, dude, I'm good. So I'm going to flip over my Sequidius. Now I'm just going to bounce um, Dark Magician to, or no, I'm, I'm not going to bounce Dark Magician. I'm going to bounce Eternal Soul. I can't bounce the Dark Magician. I, I could try, but it won't be affected. So that would be a misplay by me, but I'm going to bounce Eternal Soul. Probably, 
yeah i think i'm just gonna bounce it and then i'm gonna attack directly and if i'm gonna i'm basically going to eternal soul lock him where he can never resolve the card where every time he tries to activate it it just never resolves so i'm gonna bounce eternal soul dark magician is gonna go to the graveyard and now he kind of has two dead cards in his hand activated sequidius to get um to get my uh manifestation back to my hand and i i feel really good now because i have my divine wrath if i need to use that i will i have my call of the haunted for um sequidius and uh, i can use that as a bounce card as well so let's see if he pluses off navig or if he got like navigation that would be that would kind of like mess with me a little bit if he did um what's it called that's my I think that's yeah that's my host alert it's it's kind of dank <laughs> it's kind of dank he's setting a card so basically i'm gonna do what i did almost all of game two where i just bounce him this is why he he called my he got frustrated and he said you're playing i didn't realize you were playing uh evac the deck and i'm like yeah sequidius sequidius is real because it just takes away your opponent if your opponent is dumb enough to go into extra deck then you really mess him up now the fact that i got wiretap was really good because what wiretap is wiretap allows me to not have to worry about eternal soul period um I, I think yeah i got wiretap in all three games actually i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to go for hextia just so i can have a spell and trap negate card and then i'm going to activate sequidius i'm just going to set my manifestation again and a lot of duels when you play outer guys look like this a lot of duels are like if your opponent out turbos you turn one and you don't have regeki you don't have dark hole you don't have mirror force you don't have torrential you don't have a way of like uh, getting rid of their board yeah you're gonna get wrecked but a lot of times if you try if you play a deck that doesn't out turbo you turn one this deck is not gonna get, it's not gonna get out grinded by most decks like most decks are not gonna be able to out grind out guys i know that sounds strange people think oh it's table 500 cap this shitty deck it can't do any no no this deck like this deck was meant to grind he summons uh blue boy i'm obviously just going to divine wrath it this time I, I give up hextia instead the reason i gave up hextia and not sequidius is because i want to search milu seek <laughs> milu seek gets me back into my engine and um hextia spell and trap negation is not that important because i still have a bounce and a wiretap so i still just don't see a way of him getting dark magician and hextia does float even if he ash blossomed me i don't care because uh, i still have um like sequidius on board so it's fine but that would that would just take another card out of his hand. So Ash Blossom isn't actually that good against this deck to be honest. It's good. It's good if you what's it called? I think I'm just gonna I, I'm not even gonna bounce anymore because I have the wiretap set. Um, Ash Blossom is good against Demise. It's not really that good against everything else. He activates uh, Eternal Soul. We wiretap that, and we're just going to attack attack. I think I'm gonna go into Hexia two here. Yeah, I, I don't ever. It's very rare that I summon two Hexias in a duel, but this was an opportunity. Um, shout outs to Calvin Tahan saying that Alter Guys can't summon Hextia. Apparently, I can. I can summon two in a turn, or I can summon two in back to back turns, apparently. Uh, Hexia made sense here because uh, Sequidius and Milusik both float. So, going into Hextia gets me my Call of the Haunted right back to my hand, plus I get another search. And um, yeah, so I'm telling him I'm activating Milusik. I'm just going to reset my Call of the Haunted, and I'm probably going to get Marionetta. And if, even if he attacks, I have Concordia in my hand to block an attack. I still have a Divine Wrath. Uh, that's protocol face up. And second he goes to draw phase, I'm just going to get my um, Sequidius and just be more annoying with the bounces. So <laughs> at this point, like, I really hate playing against Alter guys. But God, it's so... If you if you like stun decks, man, really consider this deck. Because the, the whole point of the deck is just to kind of constrict your opponent's options little by little. Protocol is a Divine Wrath. You know, Hexia is a spell and trap negator. Uh, Sequidius is a bounce. Conquery stops your opponent from attacking. So it's like, what can you do with two cards? You can even, right now, you can evenly match and that's it. And if you evenly match, I Hexia negate. What are you going to have? Another evenly match, I guess? <laughs> you know what I mean? It, like, that that would be the only way you like that you could combat this board. I'd probably just keep Hexia and just beat you down with it. But um, I believe I'm talking more trash to uh, Farva. There was a lot of trash. And I know you guys are like, oh my goodness, Cap, you're such a bad sport. There's a couple things you have to know. Number one, we talk trash profusely on my stream. You guys don't even want to know the stuff they say when they beat my Alter Guys deck. They be like, your deck is garbage just like your trashy, shiny, bald head Cap G. So, yeah, we, tr we talk trash a lot on my stream. Plus, I actually talk to Farfa 
in a Skype, um, on Skype after the door, and he was like, yo, we were talking mad trash against, uh, we were talking trash on YouTube, so, yeah, it was a lot of trash talking, but it was, it was still respectful, you know what I mean, I, it was all kind of like, it was me all kind of saying just shots at Ryan, like, hey, Ryan, hey, I guess I can't, I guess I actually can summon, uh, Hex D, at this point, uh, what's it called, Farfa can't do anything, um, he summons, uh, Apprentice Illusion, he attacks, I block the attack with Conquery, I'm telling her that I'm negating her effect, which is irrelevant, but, I mean, it's an effect, why not use it? This is actually the one good thing about Conquery, Conquery is kind of a shitty monster, uh, you only play one, at least I only play one, I used to play three, then I was like, this card's terrible, I'm gonna play two, now I'm just down to one, but if you get Sequidius and it on the field, you can kind of infinitely loop it, where you can block an attack every turn, then you bounce it back to your hand, and you just constantly, like, do that to stop your opponent from ever attacking, so it's really nice, and again, with Protocol face up on the field, none of my Alter Guys effects on the field can ever be negated, so I have damage on board, my, um, my Hexia is 2,300 attack, and I think I have 800 more on top of that, so that's 3147 damage, I think, so that is game, GG, no re, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that, um, and again, I talked the far fast, we weren't, we weren't salty after the match, it was just like, yo, good game, I just wanted to prove what my deck can do, because I, I feel like there's a lot of people that think this deck is just absolute trash tier, it's not like the other, it's not like Metaphys or like Teen Angles decks that don't do anything, even when they get whatever it is the fuck that they want to get, like Alter Guys can do plays, the way that it loses is, you kind of like, if it gets out turbo by like Pendulum Magician, where, you know, they get the Electromite, and they have Astrograph, and you can't stop it, and they just put a bunt, like, yeah, you can out turbo the deck in that case, but if you get the game to a slower pace, and you can kind of like slow your opponent down, this deck can outgrind almost any deck in Yu-Gi-Oh, it, it can do that, I'm not saying that because I play the deck, I'm saying that because it's honestly true, so whatever you guys think, leave it in the comment section below, thank you guys for watching, as always, subscribe if you have not already, turn on that notification bell for daily videos.